and we follow the usual procedures. So please show hand, signal hand, and then somebody will come with a microphone. Please tell us your name and your publishing company, and then we'll have to wait for the translation. I see many hands. Okay, let's start here in the middle. The ladies are coming with you, with you in a moment. Biggest German uh, magazine for uh, Germany. Question to Mr. Bernhard. CO2 uh, saving technology. Well, you have hybrid, diesel, electric, liquid gas, and the fuel cell in the pipeline and for buses also in use already. What about your plans there? And what about your plans? Uh, what company type uh, should uh, go in what direction of that drive? Yes, apart from battery and electrics, Daimler has the hybrid technology. This is still a valid technology. And the race is not won, which technology um, will be successful. We believe that, unlike for cars, in trucks, the usage between distribution haulage and long-distance traffic is much clearer, and that this way we don't have to take the long way via partial hybrid, full hybrid, plug-in hybrid, range extender, but rather that long haul uh, to short haul, we can go fully electric. And the intermediate forms will not handle that. We want to focus on battery right away, because these are specific applications there. Of course, we will keep an eye on the other technologies, especially the hybrid, uh, hydrogen, gas, and so on. There, the race is not won yet. It's not decided yet. Question down here, Mrs. Gomez. I have two questions. One, for this new truck, are there any pilot projects that are imminent with Hermes or other customers? And the second question, when you say that the truck has a payload of 700 kilos less, less does that mean the batteries weigh 700 kilos? No? Let me begin with the batteries. The batteries here weigh around two and a half tons, 2,500 kilos. 700 would be great with the capacity that we have, but that is not realistic today. In total, the overall e powertrain weighs 1.7 tons more than what we know from the conventional powertrain. In the EU, there's a special legislation and that says that when we have an alternative drive, uh, we would have one ton more payload. And that is why currently we have 700 kilos less uh, payload compared to the uh, combustion engine driven trucks. Give us some time. We are still developing the 700 kilos. Uh, will be tackled aggressively. So our target is to um, be on a par, and then we will have the same payload again. In our development of this vehicle at Mercedes-Benz, uh, pilot customers will be involved, as we have done in the past, because this way we can best fulfill and meet the customer requirements. We can integrate the expectations at a very early stage. That's what we will do. My colleague, Marcus Cosea, a pilot customer. We have several pilot customers. And there is one here even, so we may ask him. Uh, for us, it is important, well, payload with the heavier vehicle, you have the same issue with the canter. As I said, the powertrain is not compensated yet, so that means, yes, we are heavier with the e canter. But it's a question of time. The energy density per battery and per cell will go up. 
in the next two years there will be many developments and we will have a, we will be on a par very soon so the payload uh, will not be a disadvantage in the midterm the opposite is true uh, it's even uh, a chance that we will get a benefit an additional payload Andreas Burkhep from ATZ. I have a question about the range. The status quo today, when you launch the vehicle in 2020, then the range will be different, I guess. Uh, second question, 200 kilometers range with full load or empty? The 200 kilometers is a current target for 2020. Uh, with a full load, fully laden vehicle. Next question. Uh, hello, Xavier Bouchra, Automotive World. Um, Sven, you touched on it very briefly at the end, but I'd just like to hear how important is the link between the connected truck and the electric truck going to be exactly. moving forward? Exactly. Yes, that's very important because we can do range management. The forwarder always knows where the truck is. The truck itself, the truck itself, we have to uh, keep some of the information for the IAA in, uh, in, in September. I, in brief, it's very important. That's. Uh, something we want to keep for the IAA. Next question. I have two questions. The first, the first, are you going also to introduce two and four Excel versions when one Excel driven? And the second, what about other area of using in the city environment? It means, for example, garbage collectors, etc. Not only heavy distribution. We're currently focusing on the city distribution haulage. That means two, three axle vehicles will be in our focus. You see this vehicle here, a classical heavy duty distribution haulage vehicle. And there were unique with a, a steered trailing axle. And that remains our goal. Three axle, uh, two axle are in our focus. The applications that we see for this vehicle can also be uh, possible for uh, garbage collecting vehicles. That's no problem at all. Mrs. Berman has the microphone. Let us continue in the next row. First, Mrs. Berman. A question um, about these trucks. In what regions do you think will these trucks come most? And to what degree do you think uh, will that start? Maybe I can say a word on that. We see an interest worldwide. Today, when we talk to customers in Singapore, Hong Kong, Tokyo, in Indonesia, there is a general interest also in China, battery driven vehicles is enormous. The tendency is that out of all trucks, about 10% uh, are used for urban distribution haulage. So in the long term, it's uh, possible that uh, all these trucks will be electrified in the future. Let us continue here and then with Mr. Gerster. In a, in a conventional diesel truck, you produce everything yourself. With the urban e-truck, what do you produce yourself and what do you buy outside the Daimler concern? We will certainly not produce the cells because in the world market, there is a lot of competition for the best and the cheapest and powerful cells. I could imagine that on the engine uh, side we will uh, keep our know-how 
we have an advantage there already. And then uh, we will turn cells into batteries. That's not quite easy. They have to be crash safe. They have to be cooled, controlled, and supplied correctly uh, so that they have a long service life. We have know-how. We will do that. We will purchase the cells and produce our own battery packs, and we will control the battery packs on our own. At the end, in the overall system of the vehicle, we, how you do steering, heating, air conditioning, how you supply the brakes, there, there's a lot of know-how that we have to use to keep this truck, truck running for many hundreds of thousands of kilometers. The battery cooling, I could use that because it's hot here. Let us continue with Mr. Gerster, please. Michael Gerster from Automobil Woche. A question about uh, the demand you expect. Why are you so positive? With the Vito, I think you had an electric vehicle for crafts for the crafts industry, you thought it was ideal for the applications, the radius and so on, but uh, the plans did not uh, turn out successful. And the second question, in the USA, there is this startup company uh, drawing a lot of attention. It's about the combination for trucks with na natural gas uh, driven by a turbine and then electric motor. Is that a technology that would also be conceivable or which would not work? Yes, it's correct. And nice that you remember it. Uh, in 2009, we presented an eVito. This shows that we have developing things for many years. And sometimes I hear from you, not from you personally, but from your colleagues, uh, did you miss anything? No, we did not miss anything. We waited for the right moment. We did experiments. We made tests to get ahead in this technology. However, it turned out that the time was not right. And before we make huge investments to enter a market that does not exist yet, we uh, refrained from doing that. and. Now we think that the time is right. The costs have come down dramatically, 2.5-fold, I mentioned it. And now the market is growing. We see among our customers that there is a demand. Uh, E-trucks with high volumes will come. And uh, trucks, of course, have lower quantities than cars. Uh, but that development is underway, and the change has come. That's why we have the right timing. If you come too late, you lose the market. If you come too early, then you will lose, lose money. One question here. And please, uh, we need a mo microphone over there as well. Hello, Darius Piernikarski, Special Vehicles Poland. Uh, my question is uh, concerning the loading infrastructure, having such a huge batteries with such a huge capacity, do we need a special loading device other than used already in, in certain places? And the second part of the question is whether the truck is equipped with uh, driver assistance systems, which are common, let's say, in Antos, because uh, we don't have a classical powertrain, so maybe there are some differences. Let me begin with a charging infrastructure. This vehicle has to be charged with direct current. We can charge it up to 150 kilowatts. This infrastructure is not yet available. Today, you have 50 kilowatt charging stations. Personally, I expect that soon we will be able to offer 100 kilowatts as a charging power and then uh, all over the field and then the, then you can charge the vehicle within uh, two hours fully, and that helps a lot. If the vehicle stands on the parking uh, overnight, then we can charge with less power. The second question was active assist systems or safety systems. Yes, of course. Uh, that's in our genes. You know that very well. Uh, you have visited many of our events. This electric 
motor vehicles will of course have all the assist systems that we uh, that we can offer and now we move away and take a few questions over there a question to mr bernhardt I would like to confront you with your own words. You said in April when you presented the counter test in Stuttgart, electric vehicles will always be more expensive than diesel vehicles. That was an absolute statement. Um, can you explain what the effect is on your new project? How much more expensive will these vehicles be? What will the price difference be? And what will make the people want to buy this anyway? Mr. Ernst said it in his presentation already, and also Mr. Buchner. On the efficiency side, we have not reached the point where we want to be. The vehicle is still more expensive than a conventional vehicle, but we're working on that. At the moment, we do not see a perspective uh, to come below the drive of a conventional truck. I also said once that an electric truck uh, will never be seen, and now you see me here, and that shows we are willing to learn, we are open for new developments, and I would not exclude that categorically, but at the moment we do not see that. Let us continue over there. Gianrico. Do you plan any solution to have uh, in the future uh, an electric power um, reefer or a sort of uh, electric PTO for different usages? We cannot exclude anything. 